In this class, we are going to learn how to generate the authorized shared key for Azure in order to access store services in the Azure like Blob, Queue, Table and File. As Oracle integration supports JavaScript in order to create custom libraries, we are going to make use of JavaScript in order to write the logic to generate the shared key for Azure for authorization purpose. Before I show you how we have to write the JavaScript code in order to generate the shared key for authorization, let's now check Microsoft documentation for authorized with shared key. I am here in the official documentation page by Microsoft on how to authorize with shared key. As it says, every request which is made against a storage service which must be authorized unless the request is for blob or container resources. So there are pre-authenticated URLs which we can generate in order to access blob or the container resources. Other than that, like if you want to access the table queue file, then we need to go for the authorized with shared key. To generate the pre-authenticated URLs for blob storage is not the topic of discussion for this class. We will check this topic in some other class. Our main focus of interest is we are going to create JavaScript library for Oracle integration in order to generate this shared key. You can check this documentation why the shared key is used, shared key for block queue, file services, shared key for table services and the key light. If you scroll down, it says all the authorized requests must include the UTC timestamp for the request. If there is the date header in the request and also there is XMS date, this is the custom header which most of the APIs like blob REST APIs are supporting. If I look at the blob services over here, the REST API documentation and if you scroll down towards the header section, it says it is expecting date or XMS date. It should be in a UTC time. If you don't supply this, then the date header will be considered. Let me switch back to this documentation. Then it says how we have to generate the authorization header. So we have to generate something like shared key or shared key light. If we are accessing table, file, queue, blob, then it should be shared key. Then it should be your account name and followed by the signature, which we generate with the help of JavaScript. Account name, if you don't know, it is the name of the account which is requesting for the resource. And signature is nothing but it is the HMAC, in other words, hash based message authentication code. We are going to make use of this HMAC that is SSH256 algorithm in order to generate the shared key. If you scroll down, Microsoft has documented how we have to construct the signature string. First, it should contain the verb. Suppose if you are making use of this API, if you consider over here under blob service REST APIs, there could be n number of APIs. I have opened the list container here the verb is get. So it says that it should contain the verb and then the headers. For this API, there are required headers. If we scroll down, the required headers are this one, MS version and the MS client request ID. Sorry, MS client request ID is optional, MS header. So these are two required and authorization is obviously required. So these are the headers which we must send. If you scroll down, it will tell we have to send the canonicalized headers as well as the canonicalized resource. We will look at how we can do that shortly in the code. If you scroll down further, it says how the sign to string should look like. Or it is nothing but as I told, it is the HTTP method like get, post, whatever the REST API which we are trying to invoke. Then comes the content encoding, language, content length, uh, content MD5, content type, the date, it should be in a UTC format, it's modified since those things are there. Based on the requirement, we have to supply those things. You can refer each and every API or here in order to know what is required for generating the string. This is the blueprint of how it has to create the sign to string. In actual, it will look something like this. Suppose if you are not sending any details in this and it is empty, then it will be like get followed by new line character. And if we are having the canonicalized header, it will look something like this. These are the headers, ms, date. And we followed by the MS version. Here they have considered the blob that is get blob operation followed by the canonicalized URL. This is the URL which they are trying to make use. Let me click this get blob. If you check the URL for the get blob REST API, here it is showing it should be the account name followed by the container name. So this is the canonicalized header which we must send. Once you generate the head key that is with the help of SHA-256 algorithm, which is based on hash based message authentication code, we need to send the authorization header. So this authorization is the header in the request that is the REST API for the services which we are making call to from integration or any other services. 
it should be like shared key followed by your account name and then the SHA key which it has generated. So this was in brief. Let now switch over to our JavaScript code which I have already created and walk you through the code. this is the javascript code which i have created so this is the function and it is accepting so many input parameters if you see over here the http verb it is exactly similar to what microsoft has documented over here all the things whatever you see over here are available in the function input parameters like the http verb account name api version all those things it will make use in order to construct this string to sign Processing date as it is expecting the UTC string. I am generating this with the help of new date of function and then converting to UTC time zone. So, this date we are making use in order to generate this canonicalized header. If you see over here, we have to generate this canonicalized header and the resource. If you look at the get blob here, if you look at the request header parameter, there should be some required fields. In this case, access XMS date it is required and the version are required. Rest everything is optional. We don't have to send. If something is required, then you have to customize this and send the canonicalized header accordingly. Also, we are having this customization. Suppose if you are generating this canonicalized header from any other service, like in our case Oracle integration, then it has to pass over here. Then it will add over here. Suppose we want origin as well to be added in the header, then we can send from the service caller, which is making call to this function. Because in most of the REST APIs, access date and the versions are mandatory. So, I have put over here. In your case, if you don't want to have any logic over here and you want to create this generic, then just remove this so that service caller has to send those things in the request. And you can map directly like how we do over here. And in the canonicalized resource, we have to pass the account name and the resource path and the blob carry if any. So once we generate this string to sign, then what we do is we just make use of this crypto JS function or the library. Then we just encode in base64. This is used to stringify. And here we make use of this SMAC SHA 256 algorithm because this shared key we have to generate with the HMAC 256 SHA algorithm. Then only we will be able to communicate with the REST API and authenticate with our credentials. So all those things are available in this documentation by Microsoft. If you just search how to write the code in javascript for authorization with shared key you will get the details when we send the response back what we do is we are sending this processing date along with the shared key so the service consumer it is their job in order to substring and get the values so this processing date will be useful in order to make the rest api in our case this function is used only to generate the signature but apart from creating the signature, the date at what time this signature has been created, if you observe over here, when it generates the date, it is adding this processing date. Same date we need to pass in the API. So we are sending back to the service caller. So the service caller have to fetch this date by substringing before underscore SCP underscore. So this date they have to get after substring. Also, they need to substring after underscore SCP underscore and get this thing that is shared key space and the account name colon and the signature signature is nothing but it is the hashed value of this string to sign so those two values are made use and then the rest api call will be made in order to interact with the resources in azure in this case in order to get the blob then we will make use of those things in order to send the details if you closely observe the request header there is this authorization so the service caller's job is to send this thing from the response of this function in the authorization header over here and in date if you observe this should be again passed while making a call to api for this purpose we are sending the date back to the service consumer the date whatever we have used over here and for generating the signature should match suppose if you are creating javascript code in order to generate this signature as well as to make the invocation to azure then you don't have to worry entire code will come over here and this variable you can access anywhere in the code also you can make this processing date as a constant instead of variable so that this date won't change over the time in this code so this was in short how we can write the code in javascript in order to generate shared key for authorization for interacting with azure rest apis I have created the jar that includes this javascript function along with the libraries which this function is making use of like the crypto js base64 sha256 algorithm all those things and i have 
imported over here. Let me open this Azure signature. Here if you see, this is having so many input parameters and in response we are getting the authorization. So integration, what it has to do is, it can make a call to this function either from XSLT, that is XPath, as well as from within the integration flow. So integration's job is to send all those details in the request and in the response it will get the date as well as the signature. So same thing it has to send while making a call to Azure REST API. While making a connection or configuring the connection, just make sure you don't provide any security. For example, in order to create any REST API, we just click on this create button, search for the REST over here, click on this, click on select, here we will write Azure blob REST API and the role should be of type invoke, click on create. If you scroll down here, instead of basic authentication, we will make this as no security policy because while we make a call to this service from integration, just make sure we add this authorization when we configure this connection within our integration. So authorization we have to add as a header while configuring along with the date. This is the custom header what we have to create. So whatever is required based on the requirement you have to create and make a call to this function that is this one with the help of JavaScript library and then generate the signature or the authentication code and pass this authorization at runtime along with other headers. So like this with the help of JavaScript, we can build library for Oracle integration or for any other platform in order to generate the shared key for Azure in order to interact with storage services on Azure like blob, queue, file, table.